Hi Barbie, welcome or welcome back to another episode of the Bible Barbie podcast. I'm your host, Anne Elizabeth, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. It's probably a little past Father's Day when you're watching this or when you're hearing this. Growing up, Father's Day was always a really weird and awkward day for me because I did not grow up with my father in my life. So around this time, I was always just feeling a little sad, a little abandoned as a kid. So if you're feeling that way or if you felt that way, I understand. I'm so sorry that your earthly father has not stepped into the role that he should have. But I hope you can find comfort, like I have, in knowing that you have a Heavenly Father who loves you so, so much, and He's there for you always. Father's Day this year has been pretty beautiful because I've gotten to really reflect on my relationship with God and just how He has really transformed me into such a beautiful woman inside and out. Before I knew the Lord, I didn't really understand what a woman should be like. I know something that became really popular around the time that I was in high school and when I was in my early college years was the city girl mentality. And what this essentially pushed on women was that we can use our looks and our bodies and our the way we dress to obtain the things we want out of men. Whether that was approval, attention, money, bags, um, security, whatever it was, more likes on Instagram. The city girl mentality teaches that you can get those things by looking a certain way, by acting a certain way or doing certain things. I definitely slipped into this mindset and it led me down a very dangerous path and I found myself becoming really prideful in the way that I look. I think it's so important for us to remember that like any other gift, whether that's a musical ability, whether it's teaching, prophesying, beauty is also another gift that God bestows on his children for his kingdom, for his purpose. When we forget that God has given us these gifts, God has given us certain things for his purpose and we begin to kind of take pride in those things it could be really dangerous and it could be a place where the enemy slips in and brings us to a place where we try to use those things that god gave us for our own advantage we begin to see our gifts as a means to get what we want rather than seeing them as something that god gave us to steward well the lord has really transformed me from a city girl to a kingdom woman and the biggest thing that the lord has done to help me in this transformation is changed my mindset and the biggest thing that i've learned is that beauty is not supposed to be used as a weapon against others but it's supposed to be used as a weapon for others and i think a beautiful example that the lord gives us of this is the story of queen esther in the bible recently i did a poll on youtube and i asked you guys who your favorite woman in the bible was and a lot of people said queen esther so i'm sure that many of us know this story so for a little background knowledge before there was a queen esther there was a queen vashti and queen vashti was the king's wife who had been called to come before him and his banquet with her royal crown. And she was not trying to do that. She was disobedient and chose not to come even though the king had called her. Her disobedience was frowned upon and lost her, her position as the queen. So the king was advised by his people to find a new queen. So all the beautiful young women were gathered so that the king could choose a new wife who could replace Queen Vashti. So this is where Esther comes into play. And Esther is described as a young woman with a beautiful figure who was lovely to look at. Her beauty is constantly highlighted throughout the story and her beauty earns her favor in the eyes of 
everyone who sees her. While all the young women are going through the same process, we see Esther is getting special treatment. Scripture says, So when the king's order and his edict were proclaimed, and when many young women were gathered in Susa, the citadel, in custody of Haggai, Esther also was taken into the king's palace and put in custody of Haggai, who had charge of the woman. And the young woman pleased him and won his favor, and he quickly provided her with her cosmetics and her portion of food, and with seven chosen young women from the king's palace, and advanced her and her young woman to the best place in harem. Along with Esther's beauty, something that is also highlighted is her obedience. So it was explained to us earlier in scripture that Esther was fatherless and motherless, but she was adopted by her cousin, Mordecai. Now her and Mordecai were Jewish, yet Mordecai had advised her not to make that known as she was going through the process. And she was obedient to that word. She was obedient to that advice that was given to her. Later in scripture, before Esther is to go before the king, scripture says, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his own daughter to go into the king, she asked for nothing except what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who had been in charge of the woman, advised. Now Esther was winning favor in the eyes of all who saw her. Not only was Esther beautiful, but she listened. Unlike Queen Vashti, whose disobedience lost her the crown, we see Esther's obedience to Haggai, to Mordecai, is what helped her gain favor in the eyes of the king and become queen. I think it's so important for us to remember as women of God, as daughters of the Most High King, that we are also in a kingdom. There is order in a kingdom. In order for God to use us, we have to have hearts that are obedient. We have to have hearts that listen and heed to his instruction. And sometimes God's instruction comes through circumstances, through other people, but we have to be open. We have to have hearts that are open to receive his word and to keep it. So when Esther becomes queen, that is when Haman, one of the king's men, decides to devise a plan. He has a hatred in his heart for the Jews and he wants to have them annihilated. But Mordecai says to her, do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at a time like this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Here, Esther has a choice. She could continue to pretend that she's not Jewish. She could just turn a blind eye to what's happening to her people. But Esther realized something, and we all need to realize that the biggest thing that comes with being a kingdom woman is having a heart for others, is realizing that your gifts were not given to you just to bring you to high places, that God does not take you from the bottom and put you to the top just so you can boast. Esther must have realized that her beauty was not a weapon that she could just use to get higher, but it was a weapon that God had given her to use so that she could be in a place that he needed her to be in so that she could save his people in a time that they needed it to go before the king and to plead her case esther could very well die that was illegal to go before the king without being called to him yet esther says if i perish i perish as people of god your heart your mindset should be aligned with the will of God. Your wants, your desires should be his wants and his desires. God cares for his people. God cares for the fatherless, the widows. That's the heart that we need to have. We need to care about what God cares about. You have to realize that your gifts, your beauty, whatever it is that you have, that you could very well use as a selfish means to gain something because we know that God gives gifts without repentance. He won't take it away just because you misuse it, but you will miss your chance to be like God. You will miss your chance to care like God cares and to use your gifts for something that's 
bigger than you. The biggest mind shift comes when you realize that you are not just a regular, degular girl in the world, but you are the daughter of a king. His cares become your cares, and your cares have always been his cares. You are provided for, you are loved, you are adored. The beautiful thing and the difference between when the enemy uses you versus when God uses you is that the enemy doesn't really care. He just wants to use you for what he wants and then he's done with you and you're disposed of. But God truly cares. He cares about your heart. He cares about your development and your growth and your happiness as much as he cares about his will coming to pass. And he can use you for his will while still working in you and making you and bringing you to a place of peace. You are a kingdom woman. You are a daughter of the most high. Please act like it. Please know it and believe it. With that, y'all, um, I love you guys so much. I hope that that was comforting or it was a help in some way, shape, or form. My social medias are linked down below. I would love to chat with y'all in the comment section. I love you guys once again, and I'll talk to you guys later.